Okay, yes, um, thanks for still being here and uh, I will try to hurry because I also have a train to catch. Um, yes, I'm a postdoc at the Hamburg University of Applied Science, started in summer, in uh, June, July. And uh, we have a yeah, growing group uh, that is uh, working with blockchain. We are about 15 people now. And uh, mostly we have IoT projects, smart city projects, but uh, we also have uh, a project that I will pre present today. And it's a bit, or it started as a project from uh, the reuse of research data. And we, during the, the past month, we thought we should extend this uh, to open science. But, um, yeah, short introduction. I will present this research project, Kupitidat. Then I will show the architecture that uh, we have come up with so far and uh, our use cases that we have developed so far and uh, are now in the way of uh, implementing those. So um, the research project is Kupitidat, funded by the BMBF. And uh, we are three partners. We are the FEZ Karlsruhe, INP Geiswald and we from Hamburg. And uh, all three groups um, add different parts to the project. So um, we have Karlsruhe, they are working on ontologies so that uh, we can semantically um, interpret the research data and uh, also with the goal to, to find this data and also to reuse it um, interdisciplinary, dis interdisciplinarily. Um, ENP Greifswald, they are actually doing the plasma science, so the, the project is based on plasma research. And um, they have the, the problem that uh, they do many um, experiments, but the results are not often reused, not so well documented. And, um, but this is actually one uh, area where it could be very, you could benefit from reusing the data from other experiments. But uh, since uh, not all the metadata are there, for instance, what are the, um, what is the machine's use for the experiment? What is the environmental condition? So that's why uh, re uh, research data is often not reused, but people just do the same experiments again and again. So this is actually the main motivation behind the project, so that uh, the, pro the experiments don't have to be done again and again, but we can reuse the data. And uh, important is there also that we have uh, quality criteria, so that we can identify which research data, which results are on a certain quality level, so that it really makes sense for me to reuse this data. And with the blockchain technology, it comes a bit together. So we would like to use smart contracts that automatically do this uh, quality check, and uh, we want to keep ownership. However, as I told, we thought, OK, this uh, concept that we came up so far with, they would be interested even in a larger scope, in the scope of open science and also of publishing. So actually, this talk would have fitted very well in the session with Bloxberg and uh, Artifact. Uh, there are probably some similarities, or there are quite some similarities. But so our main question was, so there are many open access journals around, or there are even completely free journals around, where you can publish for free, you get reviews, but these journals are often not used, but rather people use the well-known journals, pay money to have open access articles. So, um, and th the point is, uh, we thought, so what are the steps that we have to take to, to foster open access in a better way and also the open journals or some alternative structure to publish? Um, and we said, so the first thing, so this applies, bo applies both to data and to publications. So, um, yes, we need to secure ownership and data integrity. So if we talk about reuse, it's also this point. So when someone reuses your data, it should be somehow ensured that that person really reused your data without um, changing it slightly to make it fit better for his or her own research. Then um, second is uh, data has to be findable, accessible, and the quality has to be ensured, as I said already. But the main point is the third one. Um, 
why are people publishing with uh, expensive journals? Because they have a certain reputation and if you publish there, they think, okay, uh, your research has a certain standard and when you get cited, you have a certain reputation. So it's similar to the artifact approach. You have already this uh, incentive of citations and this would apply as well for data and if your data is reused, it is more or less cited by your own research. So we somehow need to ensure this incentive. And, and we believe if we get a good structure that we can give this incentive with our solution, then people would uh, go rather with uh, alternative solutions for open access than with the common journals. Mm. This is the architecture we came up with. It's uh, three parts, the researcher who is author, the researcher who is reader, and the database blockchain part in the middle. So it starts with the researcher doing the experiments. The data will be transferred to the research database uh, locally. Then the researcher can um, use a web UI to um, yeah, access our services from our blockchain solution and to first um, for instance, uh, yes, uh, certify the research data. So then we write the important metadata and the hash to the blockchain and other metadata will then be published by a conventional database. Um, so for SD access to you search and find your research. And when other researchers will then via the web interface um, first search for data and when they find something interesting or for publications they can ask for access, get the data transferred either yes by a new link from the original research data management to their own then it can be hashed again to ensure that really the right data has come over. So we have these services for, um, for dApps, we have to certify verify um, contract for one for publishing, one for access, curation, which is the quality control, uh, then a review process. So um, I guess when you have public uh, publication of research papers, then the review is kind of the quality uh, control and the reputation management. However, we haven't really implemented this review case, but as we have seen, Elena is working on these parts, so it fits very well together. Um, so I present three use cases. Uh, this is the, the simple use case that all of you know and that is nothing new. Just to yeah, request a certification when, you have, when you're done with your research. Um, in the more complex sequence diagram, I hope it's not too technical, but this is what we use then for the implementation. Follow this. So it will be this step. So the researcher gains data with the um, sensor application from the experiment, and this data is stored in the research database. So in a perfect world, we could really uh, already access the data from the sensor and creating the hash directly here, so that there's no way that this data is in any way modified. Um, but this, uh, yeah, we are not there yet. Then uh, in the next step, the researcher would ask for a certification. And here is what's also something that is a bit special for our solution, but what also Artifact is working on now, and was also our first challenge, that we really sent the hash algorithm back to the research database so that the hash is actually calculated locally, but from an algorithm that we control via, or not we, but that the blockchain solution controls. So that we really ensure, yes, the data is there, yes, the data has been hashed with this algorithm. And we have also developed a kind of solution that uh, we talked about the case, there was some question from the audience. So what happens in five to 10 years when actually the hash algorithm is not, it might not be secure anymore. Maybe we have quantum computers that do it completely differently. So yeah, we also implement an algorithm that can update the hash algorithm later. But uh, we then come to the problem that we might deal with huge data sets. For instance, uh, in physics, they have 
um, terabytes of data, actually, or at least gigabytes. So that's another challenge. And for the next uh, use cases, I won't show these uh, sequence diagrams because it comes very too detailed and you wouldn't be able to read it anymore. I stay on this uh, more on a flowchart level. So when we try, when we want to have a publication, so the first use case was just to certify the data. But here you actually publish your data. You want to make it public. And this could be research data that you have already created a hash, or it could be a publication that is based on other research data, either your own or others, or it could cite other documents, other publications. So you request your publication, and uh, the publish contract will try to verify the objects that you have used. So it checks the, your citations, so is there any data involved, and then it can uh, the certifier can ensure the hashes, so you have to submit your uh, your research item and use data set so that you can uh, ensure the hashes check in the blockchain if the use data set still has the same hash as entered in the first place and if this is done then uh, you can continue to the quality check otherwise you will get a rejection and then the quality check will do the curation. That's the methods uh, developed by INP Greifswald. And if the quality is okay, so you can come up with different types of quality. So the, the easiest thing would be, is the data accessible? Is the data, it doesn't have the same hash, but you already have uh, done that. Is the metadata meta data complete? And then you can also have some semantical analysis of the data. So if you have the quality check done, it could also be the review process in case of publications, then you can publish the item. You will save uh, the, the hash and the metadata, the relevant metadata. So if you think about these uh, experiments, for instance, it could be important what temperature has been used when you got these results. So we would create a hash of this kind of important metadata. So when you want to reuse the data, you can be sure that this is ensured, this kind of environment. Yes, so you save it, and then we go to the reputation management and increase the reputation. So here we have the, uh, the challenges that we really need to uh, identify the use data and we somehow have to extract if it was really the oh, okay. <laughs> I just noticed the line there. So um, <laughs> I should not step over it. You're so the first one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so when we have a publication it will be hard to actually see which data set from the original data set has been used. So this is an interesting challenge and we might find a solution for that one. Mm, or to really ensure that for this publication, this data set has been used because there's this transfer uh, that you do when you do research, whatever. So, um, yes, exactly. And the third use case is the access, where another researcher finds your work, asks the metadatabase to return the object, which would be uh, a link to the research data and a link to the transaction in the blockchain. So. Um, the reader will, will request access and this will be prepared so the blockchain will resolve the link and if it's a more private data so if it's still uh, we think also of the, the so you have public data and you have more or less private data where you can control the access so in the case it's private data uh, you have to grant access first otherwise it would do it directly and just ask the system the research database from the other, uh, from the author. Um, create a copy from the data. This has to be hashed, again, locally. And um, yes, then we will check, is this the same hash? So you really got the data. Then it's a success, so we're done. And we increase the reputation, it's a kind of read. And uh, if the hash fails, then this means, so either the data has been modified at the author system or it got somehow modified on the way. However, we have a fail, so we will inform all the involved parties. So the author has a chance maybe to, 
to check what happened to the data and to see that everything is fine again. Um, and, but we, we still have to somehow note this in the reputation uh, calculation. And uh, there, it's the next challenge. So how will the details of the reputation management work? So if you fail once, probably this will not uh, have an impact on your reputation. But if it fails continuously, so then maybe the data is not there anymore. Maybe the data has been changed. Or maybe your research database is uh, not really reliable. But this is, has an impact on your reputation. Yes, so to sum up, um, what is very nice in the project we, we have in the end is somehow a combined top-down, bottom-up uh, approach. Because we have, now we're looking at the open science in general, it's more like, so these are the processes in place, how can we implement them in the system? But on the other hand, we come from the, uh, from the discipline, from plasma research, so uh, we come really from, from the data from the researcher and, and from their um, requirements. So we can fill the gaps in between these in iteratively. It's very nice. Um, and uh, yes, so the, the basic process, they are relatively straightforward. It is those that I have shown. But um, the devil is in the detail. So the additional security, for instance. So how can we push out the smart contract to do the hash actually uh, locally? How can we have a meaningful reputation management that really will be a replacement for the metrics available today? And uh, then how to implement a reliable peer review process, so which you are working on. Um, yes, and we are in the process of joining the Bloxburg because we also think it's not, there's no need to build another blockchain, but if we can do our things on their network, it would be perfect. And uh, so I think uh, I just got the message from James that we are in the consortium, so we're going ahead with that. Yeah, Thanks. Good. I think there are a lot of projects that try to like set new new incentive structures suffering mm -hmm. from these devils, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So are there any questions? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, a word or Yeah, is there a question? Okay. Then, uh, yes. uh, thanks for this nice talk. Um, I'm just wondering. Uh, to make this really work, if I understood it correctly, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you would this this would bear fruition if you have a lot of intercomparable measurements, right? Let's say you were measuring a fundamental constant, and everybody like like would 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 give a certain value, and you have a certain va uh, variation, and those far outliers would would be something you'd you'd um, give a negative reputation or or somehow downscore. But often, in, in most practical experiments, it's essentially not only the data set, but unfortunately, I mean, ideally it wouldn't, but unfortunately, they also depend on your specific setup, right? So you have a certain experimental setup, and unfortunately, the, the result of that measurement is not, or is dependent on how you measure it, right? Especially in life sciences and so on, right? Mm -hmm. So how many, like, like what is the typical cases where you would have a lot of kind of things measure, uh, being uh, the same thing measured from different groups with, uh, let's say, expecting the same results? So you have like a, a critical mass of measurements where it makes sense to really intercompare them and then validate them with your systems. Mm. So we're not really comparing results to each other. So. Um, but we would like to, to have experiments well documented so that they could be repeated in a better way and um, also that if you find out that it's, but that's not really in our system, but if you see that these results are reliable, when you, so you only have to repeat maybe one experiment and then you can believe, okay, you can trust the research data from these group because they use the setup that they have in the metadata. So it's a bit more in this. Mm. Okay, thank you. Are there any more questions? Yeah, okay. Uh, 
what is the uh, status of implementation and uh, is there any uh, like uh, um, any implementation that uh, can be test driven anytime soon mm -hmm. or what is the time frames for that mm -hmm. I ask it because mm -hmm. I find it very very interesting Mm -hmm. Yes, so I mean, there you can see we, we are started more than one year later than uh, uh, Artifact, for instance, so it's not so much implemented. We have implemented the, the verification process, but this will probably be replaced by Blocksberg. And what we, we have done now, we have defined those use cases, so we could start with the implementation as soon as we have access to the blockchain or API. So. It, uh, it will it, we will probably take a small step. We were discussing with Bloxberg to have uh, some kind of collaboration of uh, also in the direction of re review process. So we will see if something happens there in the next months. But uh, to be honest, I don't think that we will have a whole system that would be comparable to artifacts. We are more we are a research project and we would love to be in this direction. But uh, we, by ourselves, are too small. That's why we joined Bloxberg, and um, we will probably implement parts, the parts that are most relevant for our project, and then we will see how far it goes. Okay. There are no more questions. Yeah, thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you. Yeah, you, you held up to the quality of the other talk.